And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're talking about Testifier Bull Run 1861. This is a Civil War game by Mayfair, huh? Designed by Martin Wallace. Well, Martin Wallace wasn't originally known as a war gamer, but uh, let's see, he's done Gettysburg, he's done Waterloo, he's done a few acres of snow, so, but this one is supposed to be a light war game. Uh, let's take a look at it and see if it's any good. So here's the map of Bull Run, and you can see this is basically the starting forces for each side. You have the Confederate forces over here, the Union forces over here. You can decide where your general goes, but that's basically it. Each side gets a nice handful of dice of their color, and the dice are nice quality. You know, the gray for the Confederates and the blue for the Union. You also get a little card here, and then a deck of cards that you'll be using over the course of the game. So we have, for example, here, uh, these are the cards that the Union player will be using over the course of the game. So, we're ready to play. Now both players will be doing the same thing on their turn. You're going to roll a certain amount of dice, which may be adjusted by cards, but usually it's going to be three dice for the Confederate player and four dice for the Union player. So I roll my dice and, and then I just place the dice on the spots that match the numbers that I've rolled. So depending on what I roll, allows me to do different things. Okay, now, what do the rules let me do? Number one lets me draw more another card. Okay, simple enough. Number two and three let me fire my artillery. Numbers four and five let me move troops over the board. And number six is my leader, which either lets me draw a card, or it allows me to move troops or fire artillery where one of my leaders is present. And that's it. The gameplay is pretty simple. When you're moving troops on the board, you move them from one spot to another spot. If there's a number between those two spots, then that's how many forces you can move through at one time for one movement. So one can move here. Nobody can move across here. Although there is a card later on that allows the Union to put a ford on the river, which might allow more people to cross. If there's no number between two lines, then two people can move across those lines. That's a little confusing. I'm not sure why they just didn't put twos everywhere. Uh, because there's two one here on the side, and that means that if there's enemy forces there, you can only move one, but if there's no enemy forces, you can move two. Well, what have you. Anyway, that's movement. If you move into somebody else where there's enemy troops, you attack. Combat in this game is pretty simple. When you're firing artillery at an adjacent spot, you roll a die for each artillery die that you place on the spot. For each five and six that you roll, you've caused a hit. Yay! You then re-roll those fives and sixes, and if you roll a six, you've damaged the unit. If you roll one, two, three, four, five, you force them to retreat. Okay? When a unit's damaged, you just turn it over like that, and it shows that it's damaged. If it takes damage again, it's out. In combat, it's a little bit different. You roll the dice, and for each five or six, you hit your opponent. Defender fires first, by the way, and then the attacker. For each hit, you re-roll. In a 4, 5, 6, you do a damage. In a 1, 2, 3, you make them retreat. And so this will go on. There's no real reinforcements over the course of the game. Retreating, you can force someone to retreat. The game ends when one person is forced to draw a card and they have no more cards to draw. The game can also end if the Union player gets down here in the corner to Manassas Station, or if the Confederate player gets all the way over here to Centralville. Or there's also three other spots that are on the board, three spots with stars on them. And if the Union player is on all three of those, when the game ends by a player drawing the last card, then they win if they're on two of those three. If they are not on two of those three, the Confederate player wins. There's one other play way to win, which is kind of a weird way. Route, you roll two dice, you win if the roll is less than or equal to the number of enemy units eliminated. So you kill four units, you decide to play that card, and you roll snake eyes, well then you've just won the game. It's kind of weird, but hey, that's in there. And that's, though, that's how you, the game is played. 
All right, now, to be fair, going into this, I am not a war gamer. I like light war games. I like games like Axis and Allies and Memoir and Commands and Colors. Uh, I, I, I've played heavier war games like Paths of Glory, uh, but they're not really my style. This is not a heavy war game by any sort of stretch of the imagination. All the units are the same. There's really only the difference is artillery, infantry, and units. Artillery doesn't have anything to do with uh, combat. It just fires. Infantry, all they do is move around and shoot at each other. Leaders are there just to get better rolls on the die. Um, so it's very simple. The cards add all sorts of different effects to the game. They let you roll more dice. They let you double the dice that you shoot in artillery. You can mess your opponent over, make him move fewer this turn, etc., etc. Um, the combat, and I, 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 when I was talking about combat, I didn't mention when, when, you're, when you're fighting for combat, you roll dice. You roll two dice for each infantry unit you have in a battle, but the most you can roll is six. So the most infantry you need to send into a battle is three, because then you get to roll six dice to attack with. But even one guy still rolls two dice. Battles were very unpredictable. And that's fair, I guess, historically. Uh, in fact, it can be very unpredictable with what you roll. I really need to shoot my artillery and I don't roll them three turns in a row or I want to do something else and I keep rolling artillery can be annoying. In the one game I played, I kept drawing cards the whole time. Well, that's exciting, except I wanted to do something other than simply draw cards. The die roll is really, really important. And since only two out of the six sides let you move troops on the board, well, I guess three out of six do if they're with a leader, but still, it just... <sighs> The problem with the game is it's too slow. It's a light game. I, I mean, I understand that war games, heavier war games, should be long and drawn out. Uh, not, I mean, I don't think they should be, but I can understand that they are. A light war game, though, needs to be quick. And this one just takes much longer than it should. It just, it's not even, a, I guess, a long game. It's probably an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. But it seems to move at a glacial pace. It also seems, and this is maybe a byproduct of many war games, that there really isn't a lot of diversity from game to game. I don't see how you're going to play much different. Even your choices are usually pretty obvious. And it's just, I don't know. It, the game just came across as boring. And it doesn't seem like this kind of game should be. So those are my thoughts on it. Maybe a diehard war game will have different thoughts. Or maybe someone who, well, you know, I don't know who this game is for. It's, it's obviously not for the diehard war gamers. It's too light. But it's not fun enough, I guess, for the light war gamers. Who knows? Maybe you'll like it, but uh, I don't think so. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.